why I hate Reddit mods. The dark truth behind Reddit. I wonder what that dark truth is. Thanks to the Prime, live in the resub tedium. Cartoon Network Universe Fusion Fall. Okay. Well, thanks for the bits, Trashable. I'm sorry to hear that. Reddit moderators are destroying the entire internet. In fact, Reddit moderators so might just be the worst thing to have ever happened in internet history. And by the end of this video, I promise you that you will agree with me. You know, a Reddit moderator is a lot like a teacher's pet at school. The teacher's pet was that guy we all knew he felt superior to the rest. Mm -hmm. The guy who'd boss everyone the around. Jock, the guy the cool who'd guy. tattle on everyone for breaking insignificant rules. You could almost smell their power trip. But what if this guy could boss around millions in the most petty ways imaginable? Well, that's where Reddit moderators come in. Reddit moderators moderate Reddit for free, with their only compensation being the illusion of authority. These powerless and deeply troubled people look to exert power in any way he they can. He must have got banned from a popular <laughs> subreddit. He only had one cake day. Though, to be fair, story. Reddit mods can be fucking awful. Who's the main guy? Is it Galloboob? Galloboob tried to make a career out of being Reddit's number one shit poster. On his Twitter, it even says, like, Reddit influencer. And he does seminars on how you can be, like, a marketing guru through being a Reddit mastermind. I think it's Galloboob. Thanks to the resub, Harold. Mm, snarky Lemon. And the tin gift subs, Leon. Thank you, Leon. It is fucking Galloboob. He even did... Hold on. Let me find that video. He did a video. How to make money from Reddit. It is the dark side of Reddit where promotion and shilling is hard to control. Does he still post on Reddit? I'll go back to these messages quickly. What, what are these? These are people. These are people trying to troll you and as, and also try to get to know you. I'm just I'm, like I have to keep uh, keep my what do you call it? Just keep keep like a protection wall of what is true and what is just absolutely. Because we said bandit because, money and because Celeste. Of, uh, well, getting the hang of the online. So I, I honestly think most of the stuff I received are, are genuine. But then again, like you said someone, asking, someone asking for Yeah, I'm not watching 25 minutes. It basically just gives horrible fucking advice on something that doesn't exist. There's no such thing as a Reddit influencer. It's like the only social media site where the more you use it, the less powerful you become and the more or the less you can do with it. On everywhere else, if you get popular on it, you can at least make a career out of it, even Twitter. But Reddit is the only place where the more popular you get, the less options you have to make it a career. He chose the wrong horse. Thanks to resub Calcat. I want to see if he still posts, though. Give me one sec. Let's see. Um, here we go. No, he hasn't posted in a year. Oh, never mind. Eight hours ago. I was wrong. Thanks to Reese Abdani. Picture of me with their... They're the same types of people who become abusive police officers, but instead of policing crime, Redamod's policed language. In 2020, Redamod's policed language so badly that they ended up deleting 6% of all Reddit posts. And this wow. is because six power-hungry mods are now in control of 92 of the top 500 subreddits. So then the real question is, who are these anonymous moderators policing the internet? Why would hey, anyone thousands of subreddits and millions of posts for free? And most important of all, how did 92 of the top 500 subreddits fall into the hands of six power-hungry mods? Well, the answer to these questions goes a lot deeper than I initially Exit expected. One. Because to understand the Reddit mod, you need to understand Nyan, Reddit. You need to Nyan understand where it all Yarin. went wrong. Because somewhere, somehow, Reddit turned into everything it's supposed to destroy. Reddit never used to promote tyranny and censorship. <clears throat> Reddit never deleted 6% of all posts. In fact, Reddit used to be a platform for tolerance and free speech. So what on earth happened? Well, this is the real story of the rise and fall of Reddit. Oh, it's the Illuminati? I fucking knew it. Probably all ties back to r slash gaming. Worst the fucking subreddit in the ever. The dorm rooms of the University of Virginia. Co-founder of Reddit, Steve Huffman, otherwise known as Spez, was your typical nerdy character. He was that Zuckerberg type. Geeky, computery, smart, and power hungry. And unbeknownst to him, Spez's perfect match was just across nice the dorm. So Alexis and I met in college. 
We were hallmates first year. He lived right across the hall from me. He was disappointed because he thought I was a girl. I was like, oh, Alexis and Mike live across the hall. It must be like a co-ed dorm. That's cool. <laughs> it wouldn't take long for Spurs to realize Alexis was really just a charming version of himself. Oh, and over the following years, Alexis and Spurs would become close friends. Their friendship was strengthened by their passion for computing. In order to monetize this passion, they would come up with their first idea for a startup, My Mobile Menu. And one of the ideas I had was for ordering food from your cell phone. I had told Whoa. Alexis this idea once. He's like, we should totally build it. However, the idea was simply too far ahead of its yeah, time. Yeah, pretty innovative. After the pitch failed to gain enough financial support, the two would begin working on a new idea. During this time, internet culture was in its infancy. Internet memes were only just beginning to crop up here and there, and Spurs and Alexis caught on to this. They could tell that internet culture wasn't going anywhere soon. It was clear that if Spurs and Alexis could figure out a way to centralize internet culture, millions were to be made. And so Spurs and Alexis would set out- Actually, they sound like really smart guys. Their idea was to create a site that would be the front page of the internet. This would later become the adopted slogan of the website, but for now, the slogan was initially called Snoo. The intention oh, behind Snoo was for people to ask what's new, although it wouldn't take long for them to realize the domain name was already taken. So a few other domain ideas were considered, Ubaloo, 360 Scope, Hot Snoo, Ripe Fresh, Dose Dose, and numerous others. But eventually, the name Reddit was suggested by Alexis. And much like Snoo, Reddit was a mix of the words Reddit, as in, I read it on Reddit. After receiving funding from Angel hey, Investors, three, so Reddit was released on the 23rd of June, 2005. Over the following months, both Alexis and Spurs created numerous fake accounts in order to jumpstart the website, spamming the site with interesting links in order to give any unsuspecting visitors the illusion of a thriving online community. Alexis and I started submitting all the content just Smart. to keep the thing full, right? Because Reddit's no fun if the page is blank. We would come up with a post and a random username to give the impression that the site had more people on it. The Reddit team would expand not long after, and in November 2005, Reddit merged with competitor site Infogami. The merging of Infogami and Reddit I remember when Reddit, Reddit fucking a new launched. Co -founder, a co-founder named Aaron Schwartz. Because I used to use This was Dig. a pivotal moment for Reddit. Aaron Schwartz becoming co-founder was the final piece of the jigsaw for Reddit's success. You see, Aaron was a computing prodigy. By the age of 13, Aaron had already created the site. Hey, Zuri, um, oh, the site serving party. as a user-generated encyclopedia. So it would seem that Aaron was the perfect guy to serve as a Reddit co-founder. And this was true. Because in the months following the merger, Reddit's popularity began to skyrocket. Although a few months into Aaron's arrival, things started to get rocky. This was because Aaron's view of the world differed greatly to Spezza's. Aaron viewed the internet as a tool to hold governments and corporations accountable. He oh. thought the internet could be the ultimate tool for free speech, where anyone, anywhere could express their opinions freely. Aaron thought that information needs to be free, open, and unregulated. Although the Whoa. same thing couldn't be said for Spez. Spez viewed the internet as an opportunity for business. This was the dividing line between Aaron and Spez. It's like an actual way, Marvel it was movie. This divide that would shape the internet as but with goofballs. Now Reddit is only for geniuses. 2005 yeah. was a revolutionary year. Facebook had just been released, YouTube was brand new, and Reddit was being spammed with Spezza's links. <laughs> In 2005, the internet was still seen as something nerdy. This was a time two years before the release of the first iPhone. And no, I haven't talked about it, but I just don't really have much of an opinion. iPhone. Anything could happen. Aaron Schwartz wanted to steer the internet into being an electronic libertarian utopia. A world free from government regulation and corporate corruption. He wanted the internet to be a land of pure democracy, where each and every person had an equal say in the world, where real world leaders would be scrutinized in real time, where elites would be forced into open transparency. Jesus, this guy actually thought he was a superhero. An opportunity for ordinary people Good who for him. part of the power structure to take back power to themselves. And Aaron saw Reddit as a beacon of these principles, a hub for ordinary free thinkers. However, Aaron's view of the internet would be confronted by the other side, by the other the tech squares. giants who wanted their platforms to become the titans of the digital age. Real? The side that wanted to consolidate and control massive percentages of internet traffic and the money that comes with it. Pioneers of the internet like Zuck wanted a small group of companies to decide what you can and can't say, and a small group of moderators to follow their orders. But Aaron hated these ideas. Aaron hated the corporate world and was motivated to do everything he could for free speech. And at the time, Aaron wasn't alone. In fact, co-founder Alexis could also see the importance of free speech. To Alexis, free speech was a right that must no, be you're protected. All good split. This is why Alexis actually joined Aaron in his campaign against Congress's Stop Online Piracy Act. Alexis even went so Quick far as message. to launch the national anti sopa protests. This has become an issue that's much bigger than just saving the internet now. This is a fight to save democracy. It is a fight to show 
that our elected officials are beholden to the electorate, not to lobbyists. Woohoo! This was a period where a large proportion of tech giants actively defended the principles of free speech. And in this time, Reddit was a hub for great, somewhat true. serious or interesting discussion. It was diverse, but not stupid. But all of this would quickly change in the years to come. I had no idea there was such a deep and complex history to Reddit. I thought it was just as simple as, hey, look Reddit at Dig. Off. Let's just the steal it. The combination of Spares, Alexis, and Aaron would prove to be a hugely successful business move, and people were noticing. In October 2006, Reddit was sold to Condé Nast Publications. Condé Nast Publications is a mass media company known for being the owners of Wired Magazine. At the time, Reddit was sold for a reported 10 to 20 million dollars. With the acquisition of Reddit, the team moved off to San Francisco. Maybe subs better. But for Aaron Schwartz, this was where things would start to go downhill. In the month after the acquisition, Aaron began to complain about the corporate influence over Reddit. Aaron claimed, Wired has tried to make the offices look exciting by painting the walls pink, but the grey office monotony sneaks through all the same. Grey walls, grey desks, grey noise. Ooh. The first day I showed up here, Very I simply couldn't take it. By lunchtime, I'd literally locked myself in a bathroom stool and started crying. Oh. Aaron's thoughts on Reddit's takeover, along with a burning belief in free speech, meant Erudidio the inevitable would Aaron Schwartz was fired from Reddit in January 2007. And by the year 2009, what? the co-founders would all go their own separate ways and begin their new lives. Aaron used the money from Reddit and his knowledge on computing to embark on political action. On September the 25th, 2010, Aaron downloaded the whole Westlaw legal database in a project with Stanford law students. The goal was to uncover the connections between the funders of legal research and the what? legal system itself. What Aaron found was incredibly disturbing. Aaron discovered that law professors in Stanford were receiving lobbying money from companies like ExxonMobil during oil spills, as this served as an effective route to bail themselves out of legal troubles. Aaron never released the documents, but it was reported that Aaron was going to analyze the data for evidence of corporate funding of climate change research that led to biased results. Following these actions, the FBI would begin to track Aaron's activity. Jesus he Christ, he's like Jason Bourne, Aaron continued but with nerdy shit. Speech and political transparency. And so, yeah, it's true. Sites like WikiLeaks are going to be putting up some embarrassing material about what the U.S. government does. And people are going to be organizing true, and careless. protest about it and try and change their government. You know, and that's a good thing. That's what all these First Amendment rights of free expression and freedom of association are all about. And so I thought, we should try and shut I don't know who's on the Reddit board anymore, but I thought Aaron was a name there. I think is one that I think not part of Reddit? Understood. If the internet had been around back then, instead of putting post offices in the Constitution, they would have put ISPs. Well, it's definitely interesting to see. Aaron would travel across the US giving live talks on the importance of a free and open internet. It was through this work that Aaron was able to gain enough support to prevent the Stop Online Piracy Act. This bill would be a huge, potentially permanent loss. It would be the ability to communicate with Zillow, each other over the internet. Noodle, and magical. It would be a change to the Bill of Rights, the freedoms guaranteed in our Constitution, the freedoms our country had been built on, would be suddenly deleted. New technology, instead of bringing us greater freedom, would have snuffed out fundamental rights we'd always taken for granted. And I realized that day, talking to Peter, that I couldn't let that happen. Three months after the speech, Aaron was arrested following an indictment by federal prosecutors. Fuck. Aaron's indictment contained charges of 50 years in prison and a $1 million fine. What? However, these charges were harsh for a reason. In 2012, the US government wanted to make an example of people breaking into confidential files. And with the US government's failure to extradite Julian Assange, Aaron Schwartz knew he was going to face the brunt of government it's power. The there was no way the government was letting another WikiLeaks situation happen again. Aaron knew things were bad. Very, very bad. 26-year-old Aaron Schwartz was facing the prospect of living the rest of his life in a cage. Aaron had been cornered into a trap. And after five months of his arrest, Aaron Schwartz committed suicide. Whoa, 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 whoa. holy shit. What the Fuck. Now, is it like an actual suicide or is this like a Jeffrey Epstein kind of situation? Thanks to the resub, Rezol, and the Prime Lucky, and give sub Aaron off. I need to look this up. I had no fucking idea about all this. What was his name? Aaron? What was it? I forgot his last name. Schwartz. Aaron Schwartz. Okay. God, what a shame. He seemed like such a smart guy. Okay, let's see. Mm. 
Yeah, it doesn't really say anything about it. So he was found hanging with no suicide note, and that's as deep as that goes. Oh, actually, nope. Speaking at his son's funeral on January 15th, Robert Schwartz said Aaron was killed by the government and MIT betrayed all of its basic principles. Tom Dolan, husband of U.S. Attorney for Massachusetts Carmen Ortiz, whose office persecuted Schwartz's case, replied with criticism of the Schwartz family, truly incredible that in their own son's obit they blame others for his death and make no mention of the six-month offer. This comment triggered some criticism. With Charles Pierce replying, the glibness, can, can we use normal fucking words? Fucking, Jesus, glibness. The glibness with which her husband and her defenders toss off a mere six months in federal prison, low security or not, is a further indication that something is seriously out of whack with the way our prosecutors think these days. So it is... Seems like there is at least some people. I've never heard glibness in my life, and I know a lot of goofy words. I've never heard glibness. So it seems like there is at least some people that believe it was not an actual suicide. Thanks to the resub, Sosazilla. Aaron's death. Oh, are you just talking about the game? I've already I know now, Fusion Fall. The internet had always been free of censorship. Censorship was only really used for legal purposes to keep the internet somewhat civilized. And Reddit moderators did as they were meant to, filtering out spam, abuse, and managing small online communities. But all of this would change in 2014. You see, in the years after the co-founders left Reddit, Reddit was undergoing huge development. Reddit had tripled its page views, and in 2011, Reddit had gained 1 billion page views a month. Then in January 2012, Whoa. Reddit doubled Jesus its page Christ. views again, gaining 2 billion views a month. Thanks there was no stop Mercury. in sight. And by 2013, Reddit was receiving 56 billion page views and 71 billion page views in 2014. However, in 2014, Reddit took a turn for the worst. A turn that would make Reddit the model for the internet censorship we see today. Because before 2014, Reddit was getting a lot of scrutiny in the media. At oh, the start, I remember the jailbait jail controversy. A subreddit which featured inappropriate and illegal photos of young girls. So Reddit responded to these criticisms rightly and removed the subreddit from the platform. But this media criticism was only scratching the surface. Subs, lizard. Thank you for that. the next year, Reddit would be slandered for being a sexist platform. For example, the Huffington Post claimed that Reddit was sexist purely for being a male-dominated site. The claims of Reddit being sexist got so bad that co-founder Alexis pleaded Reddit users to quote, call it with the sexist comments. Call it with the anti-Semitic remarks. Alexis also claimed that Reddit is defined by quote, straight white men. The Atlantic and other magazines picked up on this, adding to the belief that Reddit was a place for sexist and straight white men. This scared Reddit stockholders and advertisers alike. Whoa, which is why Reddit what would the suddenly fuck? undergo a radical change. Whoa, this the is first very steps interesting. Reddit's change would come with Ellen Powell's appointment as CEO of Reddit. In the lead up to Powell being CEO, Powell had gained notoriety in Silicon Valley, most famously for her gender discrimination Clayton, lawsuit, Pokey. where she sued the venture capital firm Klein and Perkins Min. for what she perceived to be sexist business practices. And whilst the lawsuit was unsuccessful, the media rallied behind her as a feminist saint. She was the perfect shield for Reddit. So Reddit employed her as CEO of the company in 2014. This was the moment Reddit changed for the worst. Alan Powell's rise to CEO created a new era of Reddit. An era Aaron Schwartz had spent his life warning against. An era defined by Powell, <laughs> censorship and propaganda. And it all began with Alan Powell's announcement that Reddit was no longer a platform for free speech. The announcement came after numerous subreddits were banned Oof. by Reddit. But this time it wasn't for legal reasons, it was to escape the bad reputation Reddit was gaining from the I consequences tier one, of Lucas speech. In the recent a complete Obsidian U-turn of Reddit's cream. original policy stated by admins just two months beforehand, Reddit admins actually created a blog titled Every Man is Responsible for His Own Soul. In the blog post, Reddit admins repeatedly claimed the importance of free speech on Reddit. This is a quote from Reddit admins. We uphold the ideal of free speech on Reddit as much as possible, not because we are legally bound to, but because we believe that you, the user, has the right to choose between right and wrong, good and evil, and that it is your responsibility to do so. When you know something is right, you should choose to do it. 
but as much as possible, we will not force you to do it. However, these claims were just as hollow as Reddit's moderator guidelines. And when I talk about Reddit's moderator guidelines, this is what I mean. So basically, for Ellen Power to increase Reddit's censorship, Reddit would need power mods to handle the dirty work. And so in October 2014, the first major power mod was born. Galaboob. Mod known as Galaboob. Yeah, I fucking call the yes! Yes! The digital representation of Reddit's new era. Galaboob yeah. is a mod with over 36 million karma. Oh, He's turned the power yeah. mod for his vast control of the top subreddits, controlling huge subreddits like R Oddly Satisfying, R Relationship Advice, and R Rosemary. He's a power mod notorious for blocking comments critical of him. And not only comments, it got so bad that a subreddit calling out Galoboob's power hungry censorship was also banned from Reddit. This was the new era of Reddit, where those who gives the power Lucas. structure would be threatened with banishment. The prime In the words of Adam Powell, Reddit was no longer a bastion of free <clears throat> speech. But again, now in it's Galoboob's this was just site. the tip of the iceberg. You see, in theory, Reddit's moderator guidelines require volunteers not to use a breach of one set of community rules to ban a user from another community, because these guidelines were created in a time when internet censorship was looked down upon. But this was a new era, an era when even more power mods would begin to emerge, like the infamous moderator Awkward the Turtle. Awkward the Turtle. This vid is for those who are extremely online. True. Seventy-two subreddits. That's and true. And like Galoboob, he's a mod notorious for silencing opinions he doesn't like. And unfortunately, these occurrences aren't anomalies either. Moderated tyranny in the last few years has gotten to an all-time high, with this model of censorship spreading across the internet like wildfire. But for now, in 2014, power mods were only just beginning to rear their ugly head. The most hated person on Reddit wasn't Gallo Boo Bork with the Turtle. I don't know who that one is. was for the CEO, Ellen Powell. I don't know who Awkward the, the Turtle time, is. still cared about free speech and internet censorship. I remember shitty watercolor. these color. ideas were at the core of Reddit. And with Ellen Powell's statements and actions, Redditors disliked her deeply. The watershed moment for this hatred came when former community manager David Croach gave an ask me anything about being fired from Reddit. David Croach stated that Ellen Powell dismissed him with one year of health coverage when he had cancer. As a result of this, a petition was made to remove Powell as CEO of Reddit. And so, so on Raula July the 10th, Ellen Powell resigned as CEO. But maybe Ellen Powell was just the instrument and not the musician, because Ellen Powell wasn't anywhere near as authoritarian as the person who would replace her. Spez. <gasps> but he helped create the site! He's its dad! Oh my god! Spez also, one thing that I find really interesting is like, you can't really make another Reddit site now. Because if you do, it just immediately becomes for racists. Like, I remember, um, what was it called? They tried to make a Twitter replacement, and it was called, I think it was like Geb or something. I already forgot now. But it was literally only inhabited by racist fucking weirdos. So that's the real issue here, is because they've gone so deep here. Like, the only people, I don't know how to explain it. But, like, if you try and compete with something that's open like Reddit or Twitter, all you get is racists. So, like, there's nothing you can really do. You just have to fucking swallow some dog shit here. Because any competitor just immediately devolves into only for racism. It's wild. Yik Yak is another good example. I remember that got really bad. Gab. That's what it was. Yeah, Gab. There was a Reddit replacement that I'm blanking on. Vidme, trying to compete with YouTube, went into nothing but videos of suicide and racism. Uh, fuck. What was the Reddit one? Was it Vote? I think it was Vote. Yeah, it's unlucky. Because, you like, now, like, you can't compete because then only racists use your site. Like, it's fuck. it's, there's, like, no winning. Like, there's nothing you can really do. This reign as CEO brought about the most change to Reddit. And as you could guess, this change wasn't good. Far from it. This quickly became obvious when Spez decided to scrub Aaron Schwartz's legacy on Reddit. Spez removed Aaron's position on Reddit's co-founder page and began scrubbing posts heralding Aaron Schwartz's legacy. This was a move that would define Reddit's new position on free speech. Next, Prime, Halloween Next, Jack Spez would introduce the quarantine, which was an effective tool to silence communities that didn't break any rules. Spez would use the quarantine to discredit content that Spez didn't like. And when I say Spez would censor content that he didn't personally like, I mean it was content that Spez personally didn't like. Infamously, Spez went into Reddit's database to alter and change comments he didn't like to distort posts <laughs> in the R Donald subreddit. Of course, those in the Donald subreddit crazy. Take, kind of didn't move, so the Donald called out Spez's direct censorship and manipulation of speech and even created a subreddit dedicated to criticizing Spez. But to Spez, this was outrageous. How dare users not the revenge? And so once again, Spez used his position as CEO to modify comments attacking him, changing these comments to instead criticize our Donald mods rather than himself. 
but Spurs couldn't what? double official on his own. And this is where Reddit moderators would become notorious for their Mickey Mouse levels of censorship. Because, as I mentioned earlier, Reddit's decline was catalyzed by the combination of power-hungry moderators and censoring Reddit administrators. On this new Reddit, it became common practice for political opinions to be banned from the site. And it wasn't just Spurs editing comments, it was Reddit moderators exerting their power over all those who disagree with the status quo. Which is why saying things like this would get you removed. Because Reddit power mods love that sweet sensation of bossing people around in the most minor ways imaginable. And I could go on and on about the countless examples of moderated tyranny, but I think it can all be perfectly summed up with this post right here. And just guess what happened to this post. It was of course removed by Gilded. Reddit moderators. Oh. And not only that, the user who posted it was banned from over 40 major subreddits in 40 minutes. And you're banned. You can no longer post on wholesome puppers. So then you may be asking, how did these mods gain so much power? Why was Aaron Schwartz scrubbed from Reddit history? Why did Spez actively work to stifle the free speech of Reddit users? I mentioned earlier that these Reddit mods are like teachers' pets, with their only compensation being power. But this isn't the full story. And it's a lot of you see, power. in order to run hundreds and thousands of subreddits, it takes a ridiculous amount of time. Time that just isn't available to you if you're working or being a normal human being in society. Unless you're being paid for this time. Power mod I remember mod, this. Example, has been caught I several remember this. times taking money from companies to shill their products on Reddit. One of these cases was with Gallo Boob advertising for Netflix on the subreddit Hail Corporate. When people on the subreddit began to call him out on it, he would remove every single critical comment. The Gallo Boobs of Reddit are like the Cambridge Analytica for corporations. These mods have influence over millions <clears throat> and unrivaled power on the website. The trade-off being they do the dirty work for Reddit admins, and in return, Reddit turns a blind eye to their profiteering from advertising products. And this wasn't the only thing Reddit turned a blind eye to. I mentioned in my last video on Reddit that Reddit was being manipulated by big finance. I detailed in the video how corporations use Reddit as a tool for propaganda. But it's not only corporate propaganda, in fact Reddit has become the engine for the political censorship we see today. The most clear sign of this came with Hillary Clinton's campaign in 2016, which used our politics to promote articles favourable to Hillary. And every time Reddit has brought up the fact that Hillary Clinton received more money from the arms and weapons industry than any other candidate in history, these posts would be downvoted into oblivion. That's why you What does that have to do with the Reddit Black Lives Matter though? being banned, whereas pro Black Lives Matter posts gained thousands of karma. It's why showing just some of the damage done by Black Lives Matter to ordinary people is removed. It's why just upvoting uh, some posts on the site will this get seems like a reach. Reddit. It's why Reddit turns a blind eye to moderator abuse to keep the Reddit status quo in check. It's all to keep corporations and political interest groups happy. But nothing could define Reddit's irrelevance. Well, that, this, this, this really took a turn. Uh, it's also equally possible that the people on Reddit lean one way politically more so than the other. So those posts just get upvoted naturally more while the others get downvoted by people. That, uh, that took a real big turn there. Uh, I don't think that has anything to do with the, the Reddit mods manipulating anything, unless the posts were removed, which he's not saying they were. Thanks to two gift subs lucky in the resub floppy. I mean, I'll let it ride, but now it just seems to go from like facts to more of like a, a bit of a reach here. Then Reddit submission to the Chinese government. Thanks to resub torchlight. In 2019, Tencent's investment into Reddit was the final piece of the jigsaw in Reddit's censorship model. I say this because Tencent is run by the biggest censors of all, the Chinese government. The Dutch hacker Victor confirmed this by revealing millions of conversation and users' identities on Tencent were being sent to police stations across China. And just three days after this was revealed, the Tencent founder and chief executive had a seat in the National People's Congress. And in recent years, Tencent's activity has become more and more apparent. For example, Tencent has a 38% share in Discord, a 17% share in Snapchat, and it also They're has in investments in games everywhere. like Ubisoft, Activision, and a 40% share in Epic Games. And Riot Games. In 2019, games. Tencent invested $150 million into Reddit. Now, Reddit users are afraid that their beloved platform, known for uncensored free speech, is going to get censored to meet the demands of the Chinese Communist Party. See, Tencent has a history of censoring things the CCP doesn't like. Its Chinese platforms QQ and WeChat are both heavily censored and they work with Chinese authorities to give them access to user data. 
Amnesty International did a report back in 2016 on tech companies protecting users against threats to privacy and freedom of expression. The results? Not so good for Tencent. No. Chinese firm Tencent came bottom, the report reads, scoring zero out of 100. Ranked as the company That's surprising. taking least oh my God. In messaging privacy and the least transparent. Spez always claimed that Reddit would never remove content to appease Chinese investors. In fact, he even committed to never doing so. But as always the case, money speaks. Which is why viral posts stating that we need to start taking actions to stop China taking over the world would be removed. Pictures reminding people of the persecution of Uyghur Muslims would be scrubbed from mainstream subreddits. And of course, the famous pictures remembering the atrocities of Tiananmen Square are banned without any justification. Which is why on Reddit, anti-Western posts and comments are allowed, but criticizing Xi Jinping and the CCP? That's what? unacceptable. Or even criticizing LeBron James's sellout to China gets your posts removed from Reddit. It's very clear that Reddit has irreversibly changed. Long gone are the days of Reddit being a pioneer of- Has he- has- has he even been on Reddit? The uh, what? Almost every single week there's a new thing on the front page of Reddit about some fucked up shit going on with China or something. Like, the banning video games one. Like, if you just type in China, it's nothing but people critical of decisions being made over there. Like, just an immediate search of China. It's almost nothing but negativity. Like, I, I don't know what this guy is talking about. Like, everything up until, like, this point, he was speaking, like, some actual facts, going over, like, the history of what went on and what was happening, and now it's just, like, these weird, like, wrong statements. Like, it's a huge reach. I don't get it. It used to be like that two years ago. Maybe it was, but I mean, this video was in 2021. Like, it's brand new. And it's not like that at all now. Like, I remember, uh, what was the... Oh, God. Like, when the Winnie the Pooh thing was big, that was all over Reddit. And unless those posts are deleted now, I, I don't see what he's talking about. He hasn't used it in two years, probably. I guess maybe. I, I, I can't speak to exactly how it was two years ago, but now it's not like anything criticizing China gets banned. It gets right to the front page. Like, the hot thing to do on Reddit now is to criticize China. I, 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 I Damn. What a shame. This was like a really well-done video, right up until like the 20-minute mark. Of free speech. The days of Aaron Schwartz's values being at the core of Reddit have been replaced by the values of power hungry moderators, corporations, and Chinese propaganda. But what if Reddit's fool isn't just endemic to Reddit? Reddit has been the catalyst for a wave of censorship across the internet. The model of power hungry moderators, out of control tech leaders like Caleb and the and political Caprin, propaganda and is a model adopted feed. by almost all social media sites. Since 2016, the Chinese Communist Party paid $20 million to outlets like the Los Angeles Times, the Chicago Tribune, and the Washington Post. Twitter, which now operates as a publisher, also received checks from the Chinese government totaling hundreds of thousands of dollars. Social media companies have learned from Reddit. Reddit has shown that the backlash to censorship is only minor once you have a group of power-hungry moderators controlling the flow of information. Oh, because people beg for censorship now for some places, especially on Twitter. Round, led by Tencent, brought Reddit's Ooh, valuation to $3 Yoshi. billion. Dollars. Almost that, doubled Yoshi. Reddit's valuation just two years beforehand. And in 2021, Reddit's valuation is now at $6 billion. But the worst part of all is that Reddit moderators could have stopped this. They were the only people who had the power to do this. They could have shown that social media companies can't get away with the erosion of free speech. Reddit moderators showed that they had this power to change Reddit in 2015. In July of 2015, Reddit began experiencing a series of blackouts as moderators set popular subreddit communities to private. This was done zero? in protest of the recent firing of Victoria Taylor. This Reddit moderator blackout ended up being highly successful and was one of the main reasons why Ellen Powell stepped down as CEO. So if moderators could do it back then, <clears throat> why not now? Well, because it doesn't fit into their tribe. It goes against the grain of their ideology. They don't want to be labeled controversial or conservative or lose any of that lucrative money shilling products from Reddit grants them. Instead, the moderators of Reddit are compliant to censor anti-China posts in exchange for power and money. This model of censorship Censor anti-China posts? This is why you see censorship everywhere on the internet. It's an incredibly lucrative business practice. To receive Chinese funding means you could double your company's valuation in a ridiculously short time frame. The only cost this comes with 
is the fabric of Western civ- Oh, what the fuck? Man, if this guy just stopped at the 20 minute history lesson of Reddit, which was super interesting, it would have been great. And then maybe just save this for something else. Like, what, what anti-China posts are getting censored? The, the front page of Reddit is constantly just critical of China. Like, I don't know what he's talking about. Thanks to the bits Ragnaration. Damn. Like, Reddit is probably one of the most anti-China places I can think of off the top of my head. It's talking about Aaron, which makes sense, because, like, the first 20 minutes were great. I was super drawn in. It's not fair to love part of it, and then when it gets controversial, just to discredit that part. It's not controversial, it's just blatantly wrong. <laughs> Like, 20 minutes were spent going over actual facts, like the history of Reddit, who formed it, Aaron, what happened with Aaron, and that was super interesting, and now it's like this weird reach about how Reddit is all sucking China's cock, but the entire front page of Reddit is always anti-China posts. I hate Reddit as much as the next guy, and I was super down to see, like, more things to not like about Reddit, but, like, this is just, like, wrong. Again, I'll just, again, do another search on Reddit for China, and it is nothing but negative posts about China with thousands upon thousands of updoots. It, it is not, like, censoring China posts that I've seen. Like, this is just an immediate search of China from just rel I haven't touched anything, and it is nothing but critical of China. It has nothing to do with being controversial. It's just, it's just wrong. You don't know what isn't there though? Yeah, but he's saying that he takes down, the Reddit mods take down any post critical of China. And if that's true, they're doing a horrible job because this is all from the last week it seems. Thanks to Prime, JDF Cool. It's just news. Right, bad news about China. That's what he's talking about, right? Another thing he mentioned was Tiananmen Square. Let me see. Oh, hold on. I need to make sure that there's nothing bad that comes up. I feel like I'd get banned on Twitch if there's something not good here. Let's see. Yep, here. This should be fine, I think. I don't see anything, like, bad. And then scrolling down, there's a couple pictures of it, but I'm, I'm not going to take a risk on Twitch. This is just the first search. So it, it, it doesn't seem like they're doing a good job. Considering this one has 121,000 updutes, this one has 62,000 updutes. Did I spell it wrong? Did I? Oh, I did. Yeah, there. Same thing. Like, it's not like any of this shit's deleted. So, I mean, it's just like he's, he's, he's just like actually wrong. Reddit still fucking sucks, but I don't understand what point he's making by just presenting something that you can immediately disprove by just typing it in on Reddit. Which ones are negative again? He said that you can't even look... What, what did he say about Tiananmen Square? That it immediately gets deleted when talking about it? 
or ideology. They don't want to be labeled controversial or conservative or lose any of that lucrative money shilling products from Reddit grants them. Instead, the moderators of Reddit are compliant to censor anti-China posts oh in exchange for power like eight and of money. This model of censorship has made Reddit bank. This is why you see censorship everywhere on the internet. It's an incredibly lucrative business practice. How to receive like Chinese funding means you could double your company's valuation in a ridiculously the short time frame. The only cost this comes with is the fabric of Western civilization. That's the beauty of America that you can be different. Right. You can be an individual, but now you cannot be an individual. And that's what North Korea did. On YouTube is that I talk about women getting sword in China. And those is it tier one Stormborn? Because, I mean, it's uh, so much to meet the YouTube guideline. Yeah. And they letting North Korean regimes have their propaganda channel on YouTube. So they give a platform to dictatorship. But they do not want to give a platform Wheeler. to the people who is fighting the human rights justice fight. Reddit has been at the core of this censoring trend. Reddit has shown how easy it is to get moderators. Reddit censors the fuck out of things. Reddit has shown how easy it is for users to accept censorship but by controlling it, the narrative. I would certainly Reddit not say that it's a is no longer bastion right. for sucking this China's dick. This censorship has given the go-ahead for all the other tech giants to censor. And people passively accept this because when all dissent is silenced, you feel alienated. As if your voice doesn't have any support. Because you never see and connect with all those who don't want to see the erosion of a free and open internet. And Reddit moderators could have acted as the final buffer. They could have been the final force to stop the censoring trend. But instead, they turn their back on free speech and the country for greed and power. This behavior is anti-Western to the core. Throughout history, the default style of governance has always been dictatorship. And to be in power, you have to be ruthless. You have to punish your enemy in the public eye. You have to censor speech that doesn't go along with the government projection. Every king yeah, and emperor did the same thing true. until the United States. The United States, a country which understood the importance of freedom of speech. The founding fathers knew this because they understood human nature. They understand what had happened in the past when free speech was stifled. This is, this is starting to sound like a manifesto. But now we see the people who are willing to give all of that up for power and greed. This is what makes the fall of Reddit so frustrating. Reddit had the potential to be one of the greatest social media platforms of all time. Reddit had the power to change the way we look at society. Reddit could have opened so many doors for interesting discussion, unconfined to conventional expectations. It could have opened the door for so many others who didn't fit inside the mold of mainstream Jesus. culture. Jesus instead, Christ! Reddit turned its back on this potential, simply because Reddit let go of its founding core free speech. And now a decade later after Aaron Schwartz's death, and it's as though Aaron's work never existed. Reddit was the only social media site that could have actually paved the way for a free and open internet. Moderators could have held Reddit admins accountable to the community and the principles of free speech. And when you remember that Reddit was a key reason for abolishing the Stop Online Piracy Act, it makes Reddit's demise seem like that much more of a missed mm -hmm. opportunity. And in a cruel twist of fate, Reddit's decline into censorship has breathed life into a new era defined by censorship. The media, celebrities, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, all of them have transitioned into adopting Reddit's model of censorship. When Reddit abandoned free speech to start censoring people who didn't fit into the mainstream narrative and government propaganda, it represented the real world transition into the control of information. The cogs behind Reddit's censorship needs to be called out. In the words of Aaron Schwartz, when people put their thumbs on the scale and try to say what you can and can't say, we should fight back, both politically through protest and technologically through online means. So yeah, it's true. Both the government and private companies can censor stuff. But private companies are a little bit scarier because they have no constitution to answer to. They're not elected, really, right? They don't have constituents or voters. All of the protections we've built up to protect against government tyranny don't exist for corporate tyranny in these privately owned spaces that we live in. You know, I think we first saw this in the 90s with malls, right? As malls became the cool place for kids to hang malls out. Malls were pretty fucking cool. All freedoms that we had against the government, we lost in the mall because the mall was a private company that could throw people out for saying the wrong thing and wearing the wrong shirt. What? Now, Facebook has kind of become the mall. It's where everyone hangs out. And so the private company that owns Facebook can tell you, oh, don't use those kinds of words. Don't use those sorts of pictures. Don't talk with those people. All of these constitutional rights that we take for granted are now run by a private company that doesn't have to some answer sharp to the shot Constitution. And breadest in the prime juice. Yeah, I was, I was, that took a real wild turn at the end there.
Well, it was cool for a little bit though. I at least wanted to finish it to see where it went. Facebook is the bastion for all kinds of dumb, stupid fucking beliefs. That's where like everything spawns from. Facebook is the like the ideal place if you're like a weird conspiracy theorist. This guy just doesn't like China. Yeah, I mean it seems like it, but I don't understand why he thinks Reddit is pro-China. Like it's it's like it's not like if he just went on there like any day of the week he would see multiple top front page posts about something that Reddit didn't like that China did. So I, I don't I don't really understand where it's even coming from. And he said that you can't find the Tiananmen Square anywhere on there, but like just a single search and you have tons and tons of posts talking about it and remembering it and going over the history of it. And then all the Hong Kong protests, that was always on the front page of Reddit. So I, I just don't know what he's fucking talking about. Hong Kong protests were literally dominating the front page of Reddit for a long, long, long time, and it wasn't even close. So I just, I feel like he's just very, very off. Or he hasn't been on Reddit in a really long time. Yeah, the Hong Kong protests had tons of traction on Reddit. Thanks, Theresa Danny. They're doing all right, okay? A lot are removed, but only, but usually only when the same exact thing gets posted a million times at once. I could believe that. I see that shit in the comments all the fucking time. There's like one, like, sometimes there'll be people whining in my comments that I deleted something they said. When I've never deleted a comment in my fucking life, it's because I kept spamming it and then it auto-detected and deleted their comment. Because they're dumb. I, I mean, maybe that happens on Reddit. I don't know. I don't like Reddit. I don't use Reddit very much. But, it, like, even I know that that was a super wrong. Because when I do go on there, the front page is literally everything he said it's not. Well, in regards to China. There's obviously a lot of censorship on Reddit in general, though. <laughs> 